so I think I know why you're here. You want to know if something like the Stream Dock Slim or any of the other Mirabox Stream Docks are worth it for you. If there's anything I miss in this video, or if there's any questions about things you want me to try out at least and I'll let you know how it goes, feel free to mention it in the comments. For starters, let's look at the Stream Dock category. Creating a folder is exactly how it sounds. You could basically have layers on layers of layers of different buttons and hotkeys and things like that, all within folders. And yes, you can put a folder inside of a folder. Extremely useful. Scene shift is a means of switching your different scenes. That's not to be confused with OBS scenes. We're going to go over that later. These scenes are these things on the left here. You could make them, you could delete them, and there's some presets already. Basically, each scene is comprised of six different, let's call them windows. That's this little thing you see here. This is essentially just saying you could have a different scene for a different program or a different whatever, and it could just have so much in it. Your previous page and your next page is exactly as it sounds. Your scenes are comprised of these pages. So basically, like, let's say I'm on page one right now, you could just move to page two. Stuff like that. It's a simple navigation. The page indicator is exactly as it says. It's just going to tell you what current page you're on. Uh, it's almost like a waste of a slot, but I kind of like it being there anyway. But that's up for you to decide. Brightness is exactly as it sounds. You could adjust the actual brightness of the device itself. Moving right along, we're in the toolbox now. Website is exactly as it sounds. You could put a website link, and it's going to take you there when you press that button. You could always add a title and adjust the font. Now, the options for it are kind of limited, and it doesn't look too good, but it does get the job done for simple things. Also, notice how it automatically got the icon of the website it went to. This won't work for everything I noticed, but it worked for most things. Let's say you don't like the icon that is there. Well, customize it. Go ahead and right click the icon. You can select your local file, open the icon library, make a screen capture, or just reset to default. The library does have a few things that might be useful for you. It doesn't have too, too much, so I recommend just making your own icon if you really have to. But mostly it should pull from most websites and from most of your programs that you link to it. And now we have the hotkeys, which are probably the most important thing you could have in a device like this. It's exactly as it sounds. You just put a hotkey, whatever you want. And it does that hotkey when you press it. Now the mouse event something is something I personally don't use, but maybe it'll be useful for you. It has it so you could do a mouse click, a double click, you could move the mouse, or you could use the scroll wheel all through just pressing a button on your deck. Dock. It's a dock. So open is exactly as it sounds. You could open a file, you could open a program, you could open a folder. So whatever that might be, you just get the location of it, plop it in there, and you're good. That icon also I didn't have to upload. It kind of just knew what it was. It doesn't do this for every single program or thing that you kind of connected to, but when it does happen, it's useful. Notice here I have a few shortcuts for different locations on my computer. Here I have my capture folder where I have all my game captures and OBS stuff. The text option here is kind of cool. It's basically like I'm going to put in some words or text or whatever. And then you could toggle on that use copy and paste input. And whenever you press that button on your dock, it will copy to your clipboard, which then you could paste. So the password one is kind of cool in a way, where when you do press it, it will actually just input your password, similar to the text one. It'll kind of paste it, and then from there, it'll press enter automatically if you have that selected. Kind of cool. It's like a one-button sign-in, but we kind of have that built into our browsers already. So and it's kind of nice. Multimedia is exactly as it sounds, and you have quite a few options here. So maybe you want to skip to the next track, go back, pause, mute, volume, all that kind of stuff you do have. And right onto the audio player. You have an option to play audio or stop audio. 
The audio could be a sound clip or just a straight up full song. So yes, this essentially means you can have a soundboard built into this, and that's a pretty big deal for streamers, or people just looking to troll their friends on a Discord chat. Now this isn't my typical thing, usually I do like art related videos, like a hardware review, or like a speed paint, and I hope to do more of that stuff very very soon. But if you do happen to like my content, uh, feel free to subscribe. And like the video if you are into this, of course. Thank you. You of course have a volume slider and things like that. So you have very, very basic, basic things like your output. Nothing too advanced here, just basic. You play the sound, you stop the sound, and where's that sound playing and how loud is it? Stop audio is exactly as it sounds. You're stopping the audio. Now over here in the operation flow, we have something called the action flow. I'm pretty sure this is some kind of automated function thing, but I could not get it working and I didn't really look too far into it because I already have automation built into my operating system, honestly. So it's not really something I'm looking to utilize, but if this is something you recognize, you do have an option for it. And now to touch on one of the most important things this device does have to offer, the OBS Studio plugin here. Notice from the get-go, I don't have any connection information, which is weird because I literally have OBS open and it's connected anyway, but let's go over how to do that. Here we have the server IP, server port, and the server password. Over on OBS, just go to Tools and WebSocket Server Settings. Over there, you're simply going to match the thing, let's say server port, with the number next to it. So server port for me is 4455. Your password, just stick it right in there. And that's really all there is to it. And then you'll see that it's connected on the bottom. Kind of weird for mine, and it's been happening kind of uh, often. It wouldn't actually be connected even though it says it's connected. Now it's pretty indicative that it's not connected because, look, my dropdown's not working. I should be able to see all the scenes, but they're not showing up. So what I have to do here is basically stop OBS and stop this uh, StreamDoc software and open them back up. After doing that, everything's functioning. So now that I have that going on, I could basically just click scene and choose one of my scenes. So all of these things are exactly as they say they do. Your scene change is going to change to whatever scene you put, things like that. So yeah, they're pretty useful, but honestly, you could just connect these to a hotkey probably. And if this isn't working too good, you could just be hotkeying anyway and linking that to a button. So you do have a plan B just in case this OBS thing doesn't work too well for you. Notice how for source visibility, it shows my scenes, and if I were to select a scene, then my sources for that scene do pop up, and they do match up for, you know, with what I actually have on OBS. So we know that's working right now. The audio mixer here is just basically disabling audio for whatever you choose. I personally don't use this uh, particular mode, but studio mode is there for you if you do use it, so it does look like a toggle. I didn't do anything when I pressed it, but I also don't have that kind of thing set up. Always nice to have a dedicated screenshot button, so that's cool. And here we have the transition. So it, this doesn't actually give me any more options than just transition, and when I press it, my transition actually doesn't happen. I also find it weird how there's no extra options for it. I can't select the transition. I can't do anything like that. So I'm going to chalk up to this one just being currently useless for me as of right now. And you got your green background image up, your green background image down. This is basically putting up your green background. This is going to be those things like 
if you have a, a green screen, stuff like that. And onto vMix. I don't know what the heck this thing is. You can download the plugin for it, but it just, it doesn't look like it offers anything too crazy. I mean, most of these things are kind of there. Um, you do have things like stream servers and stuff like that. Maybe it could connect to like Picardo and stuff, but I haven't delved into this yet. Maybe it's super useful, but as of right now, this device is already really useful for me. But uh, if you do want to look into this, you do have this kind of support for it. So it's called the vMix plugin and it, uh, who knows, maybe it's actually really cool and I'm missing out, but this is all about the rest of everything, not about vMix. You do have a few YouTube things for streaming. You got your chat message, so you could just have a default like, oh, uh, just, hey chat, how you doing? Like, just automated. I don't really stream on YouTube, nor, I mean, I would just type it anyway. But <laughs> if that looks useful to you, you do have that. You also have a view counter for your stream. Now, ironically, useful notes might be one of the most useless functions, in my opinion. You can place a remember things little icon, and you could basically make a note. It's kind of just like a Google Calendar or Google Keep kind of thing. Stuff we already have access to, but this is built in. So it might be useful to you. I personally hate how it looks. I know I could just customize it anyway but it just doesn't look too useful for me as it is. But oh, that interface, oof. But they definitely tried to give you some utility. I, I respect that. Now, these are kind of weird. You have your CPU usage, CPU temperature, the memory, your internet speed, and hard disk, which you could select. Basically, it'll show you how much you have left and have used for each hard disk selected. So you could have a, a hard disk, one particular one for your C drive, one for a D drive, blah, blah, blah. But uh, mine aren't even popping up. So what's the deal with that? They popped up prior, but they're not popping up now. So is this a software thing? Is it going to get fixed in an update? I don't know. But as of right now, I honestly don't care too much about these, especially that they're not working. <laughs> so they're here if they get fixed, right? There are some decent options for if the visual actually appeared, it could show you the load threshold, the danger threshold for your temps, but I'm not seeing it. On to the time options. You have some pretty basic things that might be pretty useful. You could have the time, or maybe you want a time for somewhere else. Maybe, maybe you have a friend over on the other side of the world and you want to know what their time is from the get-go without doing a conversion or any crazy math. You could have it there. You also have timers. So you could set your timer and just let it rip. Nothing really too crazy with these. I mean, there's, there's not much to it. It's just a timer. So that's exactly what it does. You have a lot more options with the actual alarm countdown, basically. This countdown, it'll play a sound that you could customize. And you could change the color of it. Uh, things like that, but it sounds kind of useful. I could dig that. The weather is kind of, kind of basic. I mean, you'll be able to enter your city. Let's just put in New York and go to your list here. It'll usually automatically find it depending what you, what you type. You might have to search for it. You have two different graphic options. doesn't really tell you much. It's just like, oh, it's sunny out today. Doesn't tell you, like, other than, oh, is it going to rain? Anything else going on? Also, notice it's in Celsius, and I haven't found a way to change that. Keep that in mind if you're not into Celsius. Now for almost a final thing, the info board. So this thing on the right is something not all of the docs from your box have, but the stream doc Slim has it, and uh, you could throw stuff in there. Honestly, though, you're just pretty limited with just weather time and uh if the memory and cpu thing and stuff actually starts to work you could put that there you could also throw your notes in there as well also i haven't seen anything about a gpu connection i would love to see my gpu temps just straight up in this thing here that'd be pretty cool but uh that's actually all we got here notice you could add more devices at the bottom left 
uh, things like that. You could toggle between them and, and change them. I only have this device, so that's all you're seeing. You have a pretty basic setting option, update the firmware, stuff like that. Uh, here I attempt and then it fails. I ended up just after this, I updated it and it went fine. So the device basically just had to be off and then turned back on and rebooted. So that was just a weird thing, but it's functioning completely fine now. <laughs> That's about it. I know this is a bit different than what I usually do. I just didn't see too many like actual videos of this particular device or the software. So I figured, hey, uh, let me let me do a thing. Here you go. So once again, if you have any questions about this or if you do understand what the heck vMix is or the other operation flow thing is and stuff like that, or if you have just questions about what the heck uh how far can i go with something whatever you have a question about just throw a comment and i'll see if i could like figure it out for you and i'll reply back i hope this was helpful if you were thinking about buying one or maybe you just never really looked into the software and you already own one whatever the case thanks for watching but yeah that's kind of it so catch you later